Today we explore how to turn a Dell 7060 Micro into a playable gaming PC. Ever wondered if you could supercharge this tiny machine with a dedicated GPU? Well, we're about to make it happen. We're pushing the limits of this compact PC, transforming it into a gaming PC. If you're into innovative DIY projects, stick around. We'll dive deep into how to transform an inexpensive office PC into a 1080p gaming PC. Let's delve in. Now, let's remove the top cover. This micro PC does not have a PCIe slot, and it only has one M.2 NVMe slot. So I used an M.2 to PCIe X16 riser adapter. This adapter is PCIe 4.0, and it works perfectly with AMD GPUs. So now let's install this adapter into the PC via the M.2 slot. There are many types of cable orientations for M.2 to PCIe X16 adapters, such as right or left 90 degree angles and straight line adapters like this one. I recommend choosing a straight line M.2 adapter because it will be more convenient to install on any PC. Unlike left or right 90 degree cables, which can be more challenging to install on M.2 slots that are very close to the chassis, PCs like this one. I think I should mount the PCIe riser right here so I can install a GPU like this. To mount the PCIe, I need a bracket to secure the PCIe riser adapter to the chassis. So now let's design a 3D case and the necessary components for this PC. The case is divided into two parts, a top cover and a front bezel. I designed a cutout IO port for a Dell RX 6500 GPU on the top cover. And I also designed a bracket to mount the PCIe riser adapter with the case, as well as the SSD and Pico PSU mounting bracket. I printed the case using PETG filament and the bracket using ABS. It took nearly 10 hours to print a set of 3D case and bracket for this setup. Here's the 3D printed PCIe riser mounting bracket. This bracket will allow me to screw the PCIe riser adapter and mount it to the PC chassis using available screw holes. This bracket is also used to mount the top cover. So now, let's screw the PCIe riser adapter onto the 3D printed bracket and then install the bracket into the PC case. Now let's secure the bracket to the case with two by M3 small flathead screws. All right, now we have a capable PCIe X16 slot with X4 lanes available on this micro PC. We can now install any single slot, low profile GPU, or any expansion card on this PC. Before we install the GPU, let's plug in the male to female SATA data cable. Now let's secure the cable with a zip tie. Since this PC has only one M.2 slot, I need this one terabyte SSD. So now let's remove the SSD from the cage. And here's the newly 3D printed SSD cage. This 3D printed SSD cage 
will allow me to mount the SSD and Pico PSU to the top cover with two screws. Now let's install the SSD with the 3D printed cage. Since this micro PC doesn't have a 12 volt power rail, I need a Pico PSU to power the GPU. Now, I'll show you how I managed to wire the cable to pass through 19.5 volts from the AC adapter to the Pico PSU by soldering the cable to the DC jack pin right here. This step is critical to ensure proper power delivery to the GPU. Let's make sure the connections are secure and well soldered. Now let's connect the SATA data cable and SATA power cable to the SSD. This Pico PSU can be mounted with the SSD cage like this. Now let's connect the SATA power cable from the Pico PSU to the SATA to Mini Molex power cable on the PCIe riser adapter. I squeeze the cable underneath the GPU right here. If you prefer better cable management, you can use some zip ties for these cables. Since I tried to keep the 3D case design as thin as possible, I need to prepare the cables well. There isn't much space here and this should be ready to close the lid. One more important thing to mention with this setup, the Pico PSU is also a PSU, meaning it works the same way as a normal PSU. You need to connect the PSU activation pin with the ground pin in order to activate this Pico PSU to power on, since it isn't connected to a motherboard to control it on off. Here's the 3D printed top cover. And here's the front bezel. The cutout holes for ventilation are designed at a 45 degree angle, so you won't see the components inside the PC from the front, above, bottom, or right side. So now let's install the top cover onto the PC. Now let's secure the SSD cage to the top cover with two screws. I should install the screws for the GPU with the top cover first to make it easier to align the screw holes. Then install the screws to secure the top cover to the chassis at the back and install the screws to secure the top cover to the PCIe riser bracket on the side. Now, let's install the front bezel. The front bezel can be secured to the case with a large hook at the bottom and secured to the top cover with four screws. All right, the entire setup is now complete. We've transformed an old, inexpensive micro PC into a playable gaming PC. With 3D printed components, we achieved the seemingly impossible mission through a simple and straightforward setup. 
Now, let's preview the final project overview. For the power supply, I bought an original Dell 130 watt AC adapter. This AC adapter is the highest wattage offered by Dell with the small 4.5 millimeter tip. I think I should go with a higher wattage PSU, but the larger wattage AC adapters only come with a bigger tip that is not compatible with this micro PC. Now, let's turn on the PC and access the BIOS menu to change the settings to work with an AMD graphics card installation. In the BIOS settings, go to Advanced Configuration and click on ASPM. Under the ASPM menu, change it to Disabled. I've tried an NVIDIA GPU on this PC using an M.2 to PCIe X16 riser adapter, and it worked just fine. But with an AMD GPU, it wouldn't work, and Windows would not detect the GPU. I found that when the ASPM is disabled, the AMD GPU can work fine on this PC. Now, let's check the GPU installed on this PC. We now have an AMD Radeon RX 6500 with 4GB GDDR6 and 1024 stream processors running at PCIe 3.0x4. Now, let's perform the GPU stress test with Furmark. This Dell AMD RX 6500 typically runs hot, even in an open case installation. While gaming, this GPU reaches around 85 degrees Celsius. However, the GPU temperature and hotspot temperature are slightly different on this GPU. Now let's try some gameplay. In Doom Eternal at 1080p low graphics settings, the gameplay achieves around 80 FPS to 100 FPS. The CPU temperature is good, around 65 degrees Celsius, while the GPU temperature runs hot as usual. God of War, 1080p with original graphics preset. Resident Evil 4 Remake 1080p Performance Mode. In conclusion, we've breathed new life into an old Dell 7060 Micro, transforming it into a playable gaming PC through advanced DIY techniques and 3D printing. This project demonstrates how practical and accessible it can be to repurpose outdated hardware with a bit of creativity and innovation. By designing custom 3D printed components, we turned a challenging task into a straightforward, step-by-step -step process that's easy to follow. It's inspiring to see how technology and imagination can come together to expand the possibilities of what we can do at home. I hope this journey encourages you to dust off those old PCs and explore the potential of DIY modding and 3D printing. It's not just about building a gaming PC. It's about unleashing your creativity and discovering the hidden value in everyday devices. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. Now it's your turn to dive in and create something remarkable. Keep innovating and happy building.